All right, so we had to do the matching. So graph A, that one we know is an even. So the question is graph A, the square root or the fourth root? Fourth root. So I heard both answers. It's one of the two. But what do you think, Alex? I think it's the fourth root because it looks like it, it hits at a higher mark and then kind of goes straight down. Okay, so when you look right here on the inside, if it's like longer, on the inside before it kind of goes out to the side. Those are going to be higher roots. So that one's going to be a fourth root where D is the square root. So D is question A. Should have written that lowercase. D is the answer for question A. And then A is C. So the same thing with B and C. The one that's kind of longer, more vertical on the inside, that's going to be the higher root. So graph B, does that one look higher or lower than graph C? Higher. Like more stretched out vertically, so that one's going to be the higher root, that one's going to be D. And then that one over here has to be D. So then I did not see a lot of domain and range written on your paper, so let's review how to find domain and range. It's pretty easy when the graph is there. Domain, domain, that is the x values. That is the left, I'll get it, to right. The x values, or the left to right. And then the range is what? No, I mean, um, what? Y. It's the y values. And instead of going left to right, the y's go. Except for I'm going to write it as down to up, which sounds weird, but we always start with the lowest first and go to the highest. So down to up. So for each one of these, we're going to write down the domain and the range. And I didn't leave a lot of space, so I'm just writing on top of the graph. The domain for this one, we're looking left to right, and we're thinking about the x values. So x is greater than or equal to 0? Right, so there's no negatives. x starts here at 0, and then it goes <laughs> that way. So x is greater than or equal to 0. What would be the domain, just the x values, for the second graph? Left to right. Arn is not a thing. So it is all real numbers. So it's arn. Didn't we talk about there is an abbreviation? Yeah, it's not R, but we talk. It's R. It's not. <laughs> okay, so it is all real numbers, and if you want an abbreviation, then you use that capital R that has the two lines. That's the abbreviation for R. Why can't we just do R? Because it isn't a thing. It is a thing. That's a thing you made up. We can have a thing I in here, that. though. Nah. It can yeah. be our thing. Until you go to college and your college professor is like, who taught you math? And you'd be like, oh, it's Chris, well, no, it's no, like, all real numbers. Like, like abbreviation. Like, you know, like, okay. It's our thing. How about it's domain for C? All real numbers. All real numbers. You can either write all real numbers or you can write the symbol that means all real numbers. You don't have to write the whole thing. How about domain for e? Here's where the graph starts. We're talking about the x values. Left to right, what's the most left? Zero. And then to the right is forever. So x is greater than or equal to zero. That will be the domain for that one. So we'll go through and we'll do our range for each. So the range is down to up. The range is down to up. Y is greater than or equal to zero. So 
you're going to write y is greater than or equal to 0, right? Because y starts at 0 and then goes up from there. The second one, the range is down to up. What's the lowest number? R. That's not a number. What's the lowest number? Two by R. What number? You're getting me, you are giving me the answer. What's the lowest that this goes? Like, infinity. Like, it looks, doesn't it kind of look like it just goes straight? It's not. It kind of looks like it. This is what, this is what my other class was saying. I was saying it kind of looks like it's going straight. But the thing is, once you just keep going to infinity, it eventually it just keeps getting higher and higher, and there's no stopping it. The only time they're stopping it is if there's a clear stop. You will know about that. So this goes on forever. This is also all real numbers. How about the range for graph C? Or all real numbers. But the range for graph D has an obvious stop. And you want to think low to high. You want to think down to up. So what's the lowest? Zero. zero. And then it goes above from there. So Y is greater than or equal to zero. Do you remember doing domain and range like a long time ago? When you have that, go ahead and turn the page. Kind of the same question because you're going to do matching and you're going to write the domain and range. See what you can do, come up with on your own. Are any of these on? Uh, no. <laughs> Except for none of them are. So, <laughs> we'll miss it either way. Well, that's what I know. It's all the more results. I gave it to the So, the domain is the left to right, and the range is the up or down. You should have done one of these like numbers and one of these letters instead of having them both be letters. They're capital and lowercase. Yeah, but no. you can't really say like capital. like B is C. Like which one? Say which capital one? lowercase. It's just like a word though. Well, that's that's not my problem. I'm doing the same work you guys are doing, and I'm doing it twice. Well, you don't have to. But you get paid to do this. Because I've already done this when I was your age. I know, it's a very long time ago. My last week, my third week, so. What? Have the early birthday. Next week. That's fine. I'll switch seats real soon. Okay, um, let's talk about domain and range. Those you're going to get visually anyway, and then we'll talk about matching after that. Um, domain and range for the first one, the domain. Let's talk about domain for all of them. We're talking left to right, left to right. How far left does it go? Negative two. Negative two, and then goes on forever to the right. So x is greater than or equal to negative two. How about domain for B? What is the most left this graph goes? Negative 2. So x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So those completely different graphs have the same domain. This is just the x values. How about C? Domain. What's the most left? It goes negative 2. And then from there it goes all the way up. So we've got x is greater than or equal to negative 2. All of them have the same domain so far. Because they all start the same x. How about the domain for d? That one starts at positive 2. So we've got x is greater than or equal to 
positive two. That's the only one that starts at a different place left or right. So then look at the range. We're looking at the starting point for the y's. So that's my lowest y value. It's zero. So we're going to do oh, y is greater than or equal to zero. Then here, my y value is lower. So y would be greater than or equal to negative 2. Here, my y value is <coughs> now we're going to start with y. So we but we want to think about low to high. So think about what's the lowest number. Somebody said it. Negative infinity. The lowest number is negative infinity. So we're talking about everything that's less than zero or equal to zero. So this one just has the sign for y going the other way. And, and how is graph C different than the other three graphs? It's negative. It's negative What's this sign thing called? Reflection. reflection. Remember when we did transformations and we talked about reflection, stretch, and shrink, and translating? We're doing that again. All right, D, range. We're talking about the Y value. So the lowest to highest, what's the lowest Y? And then it goes above that. So Y is greater than or equal to zero. Yes, here. Are we allowed to write like a bracket that's zero? Yeah. Yes, but when you do the big ideas online assignment, they're not writing it that way. Um, that would be like an honors topic or a pre-calc topic. So you'll do it next year. I am glad you're in that. But you're not going to see it like that in the book, so I'm doing the way that it should be here. Um, all right, then we had to match them. So let's think about transformations real fast. Remember, when we have a variable like x, and we have something with the x. In this case, it's going to be underneath the radical with the x. When we have those together, what does that 2 affect? Left or right or up or down? It, it affects the x value, left or right. And remember, if it is with the x, it's always the opposite. So this one, where it says plus 2, it actually means what? It means left 2. It's left two. All right, so then from zero, zero, left two could be actually three of these. And you guys are using your graphing calculator. Which one was it? A is A, right. A is lowercase a, capital A, they go together. So that one only had left two, where the other ones have other things happening. So this one here has x minus 2. So it's underneath with the x. That affects the left or right. That affects the x. That is opposite. So what they go to? Goes to right 2, which is d. Uh, b and d go together. And then this one has left 2, but it also has a number not under the radical. So that's going to affect which variable? That's going to affect the y. That's going to affect the up or down. When we do the y, is that the same or the opposite? The y is always same, so this one is going to be down 2. So this one, left 2 and down 2, that's going to be this one here. At the ordered pair, um, negative 2, negative 2. Uh, let's see. And then this last one has that negative out front, which we talked about just a moment ago. That's a reflection. So that one's got to be C. Okay. I will let the book people know. Unfortunately, we've already bought all the books, so. Right. You can't you like go in and like yeah. leave out A and just put one and then leave two. This is a screenshot out of the book. I literally like took a picture of the book and printed it out for you. So, so that you can like write on, right on it. Can't you like just go through do, each package and write on it? Um, all right, yeah, every single, all, all 50 of them. Okay, guys, this page has the parent functions. 
For the square root, we're going to cube root. These are the pair of functions. We're going to make a list of the pair of function points, just in case you need to use that for when we do transformations. So for pair of function points, for the x's, since this one is square root, the this isn't there. That's the this. I added this in. So you can tell it's handwritten by me. Well, that's typed also. Okay, so the x values, we're doing the square root. Don't just pick anything. Yeah, pick things that we can take the square root four, of. Four. Small. Nine. Lower. One. Zero. Zero times zero is zero. Okay. Can we go lower than zero? Can we do negative one? Why would we we're doing do square root. We can't oh, do negative one. No. That's okay, why, so that's why we start at zero, and we yeah. can do square root of zero, that's zero. One, one square root of one, one is one. Four, square root of four is two. two. Nine. Three. Those are how you would find key points, how you find, um, what are these called? Pair function points for a square root. For the cube root, of x, let's pick numbers that you can take the cube root of. Negative one. Can you take the cube root of negative one? I think so, yeah. Let's go one smaller than that. Uh, or more negative than that. More negative. More negative. Negative eight. Negative, eight. negative one, That's zero, one, eight. So when we take the cube root, we'll get negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. So those would be like parent function points. And I'll use those when we go to do um, Transformations with the graph. Gnarly. Okay. Okay, so for this one, it is a square root. Okay. Um, I was trying to think about if I want to do this different than I did the last class. No, I'll just do it the way. The way that the book does this is they just pick an order. They put points in for x, anything that you want. What can we put in for x that makes sense? Zero. 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 So if I put in zero for x, I'm going to get square root of one fourth times zero, which zero. is square root of zero, which is zero. zero. And then four is four times one fourth is one, and then the square root. So that's one what the book. That's what the book was suggesting that you do. Like, think ahead before you just put numbers in. We would plug in four next, so that when we, so that I would plug it in, yeah. So when we put, when we plug in one fourth times four, I don't have a fraction anymore. I get one fourth times four is one, and square root of one is one. So what would be another? Sixteen. Okay, so 16, if I put 16 in, that's the square root of 1 fourth times 16, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. Why did I put it all the way over there? Because you forgot 8 and 12. Well, because 8 and 12 would work also. Well, what happens if I put in 8? I get the square root of... And it's the square root of 2, something I can take the square root of. Not without a calculator. Or if you have it memorized. No. I mean, you could do 144, which is uh, 3. Uh, that's not going to fit on my graph. That's why you're scaling your graph. But you could do that. Or you can just pick numbers that fit on your graph, too. So um, if I do square, if I do 12, I end up with a square root of 3, and that's another one that <coughs> you'd have to use your calculator. But we can approximate it. It's fine. So we're graphing 0, 0, 4, 1. H is like 1.1 something. And then after that, I'm off the graph. On your homework, on Big Ideas, you're not going to have to do this with paper. It's going to be 
like they're going to give you graphs to choose from. So if you can get a couple points, then you can know which graph it is. You don't actually have to draw the whole graph on the homework. Okay? How many checks do we get? Two. Because right. it's multiple choice. The whole thing? Two. Do it per question. Well, is the whole thing multiple choice? Yeah. I think so. I think all of it is. Okay. Except for some of them have six choices. All right. So. Okay, the next one. Um, this one here, you're looking and you're doing the cube root of x, and then afterwards you multiply by negative 30. So what numbers can I take the cube root of x? 8. Negative 8. Negative 1. 0. 8. So this says take the cube root of x, then multiply that answer by negative 30. So the cube root of this is negative 2. Multiply that by negative 3, we get 6. This one is negative 1 times negative 3. I'm just plugging stuff in. I'm making a table. This is um, stuff you guys have done a lot. This one I plug in 1 and I get the cube root is 1. Multiply that by negative 3. Here the cube root is 2. Multiply that by negative 3. And we have point. Uh. When you graph these, it should look like the cube root function. So if you graph it and it's not looking like that, that should tell you you're doing it wrong. You know what I you know what I forgot to answer on that other question? I'll have to go back to it. The domain and range. Yeah, I forgot. Because it's like really far down and I forgot about it. On mine. See how far down it is. We'll have to go back and answer that. So all cube root functions have the same kind of look. They all kind of go really far horizontally, not so much vertically. What's the domain for this one? Left to right. Left to right. X's. All real numbers. What is the range? Down to up. Down to up. All real numbers. Let's go back and uh, answer that for this one here. This one's not all the numbers. Yes, x is greater than or equal to zero, and y is greater than or equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So the lowest x is zero, and the lowest y is zero for that one. Okay, with the, the next one, um, what x values make sense to plug in? Negative 1. And then add 1 on, and then square root. Before you start, like, think about things that are easy to graph. Uh, why can we use negative? I thought we can't have negatives for x. Because you're adding 1, so it's really 0. So you'll add negative 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 0, which is 0. So what else can I put in? Because if I do the square root of 3 plus 1, you forgot zero. Yeah. it's 2. Can I put 0 in? Obviously, I love the square root. So that would be the square root of 1, which is 1. What else could I put in? I did not understand what you all said. Eight. Oh, 8. <laughs> 8, and then you square root and you get 3. Yeah. And, um, That's the only thing that will fit on that. What would be the next one? 12. Not 12. It would be 15, but it won't fit on the graph. So negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 8, 3. So the domain is the left. To right. So what is the most left this graph goes? To the left. Greater than or equal to negative 1. So it starts at negative 1. We'll have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And then the y's are down to up, so it's the lowest to highest. Y is greater than or equal to 0. 
Okay, this should be somewhat familiar, and if you have forgotten rules, then you're going to want to have this handy, because they have the notation, and then they have um, over here examples. So when we're looking at our homework, if you have a fraction, and it is next to the x, and it's underneath the radical, look and see what kind of transformation that is. That is a stretch. And it is a horizontal stretch. So I don't want you to have the wrong answer when there are examples that you can follow. If there is a whole number underneath, it's actually not a whole number. It's a number greater than 1. But also greater than 0. Um, if it's between 0 and 1, and if this one's greater than 1, that's where you get the shrink from. And over here it tells you it's a horizontal shrink. So you need to be able to answer these questions and use this chart if needed. Some of the stuff we'll come back to because we did it a lot. So here we're going to describe the transformation, and we're going to graph it. Start by putting your parent function down. What's parent function? 4 square root x. What's parent function? Can you draw that chart yourself to mm -hmm. zero, 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 zero. Um, stop your complaining. You can draw all your own chart. Zero, zero, then what? One, one. Then four, two, because you pick a perfect square, and then it's square root. Pick a perfect square, nine, three. That's the parent function for square root. That's a parent function. And then transformation-wise, we have things happening. This table is useful sometimes. Sometimes it is more of a hassle. So I'm going to show you using the table, but I'm also going to show you without the table. So without the table, we have to know what the, the numbers mean. What does it mean if there is a number underneath the square root with the x? Look. Don't you draw the parent function dotted? Sure. <laughs> what does it mean if there is a number underneath the radical with the x? What? Cubic smooth horizontally. It's a horizontal translation. And we always do the opposite. So which way are we moving if it's a minus 3? Right. So we're going to translate right 3. And what does that mean if there is a plus 4 on the outside of the right? Up 4. Up 4. And up 4 minutes. So we can take any point on here and go 3 right, up 4. Second point, 3 right, up 4. Third point, 3 right, up 4. And then the fourth point will be off the graph. So you can transform your graph by just using what it says to do. Or you can also do the um, ordered pairs. So if you do the ordered pairs and you write down your parent function first, I'm just showing you both ways. You can do it however you choose. Remember on the x side, we would do add 3 because that's what it means to write 3. And you do the opposite of what, what we're doing um, with the x. It would be the opposite. So you just add 3 to all the x values. So we have 3, 4, 7, 12. That would replace those x values. And then for the y, since it is a plus 4, you would do the same thing. Add 4 and you get 4, 5, 6, 7. That would replace the y values. And then you graph the new ones, which we've already graphed. So you can do using a table, or you can do it using transformation. It's your choice. Okay?
So the next one. Let's describe the transformations. There are two of them. Okay, so the negative sign is one of them, and it is a reflection, and it is in the something. If you do not know, somebody dealing out answers, if you personally do not know, I'm going to flip back, you are going to flip back, or you're not, you're not going to, it's on that same page. I flip back to this, and I'm going to look for which one looks like where there's a negative under the radical. Do you see? Right here. It says it's a reflection. And then over here in the far right, it says in the y-axis. So I know which one it is. And then there's an 8. And it's under the radical. So we go back to our chart. There's an 8, and it's under the radical. So that is either a horizontal stretch or shrink. Which one is it? Look, which one looks like an 8? It's a shrink, horizontal shrink. And what would be my factor? It would be 1 over 8, right. Horizontal shrink with a factor of 1 8. I don't know about you, but trying to figure out a horizontal shrink with a factor of 1 8 graphically is kind of hard, in my opinion. So for this one, I would definitely use the table. Let's do our parent function. What is the parent function for? Negative 8, negative 1, mm -hmm. 0. And I didn't make enough spots on this. And then the y's would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So then it is a reflection in the y-axis, which actually multiplies the x by negative 1. I'm going to times the x by negative 1. So now I have 8, positive 1, 0, negative 1, negative 8. And then I cross out that. So if you're not writing this down, you totally know how to do it already. Yeah. So then next, I'm going to multiply the x's by, just kidding, I'm not. Next, I'm going to do the 8. And the 8 currently says multiply x by 8. But we always do opposite. So I don't multiply by 8. I can either multiply by 1 8, or I can just like think, what's opposite of multiplication? So I could divide by the number itself. Divide by 8, which is the same as multiplying by 1 8. So I'm going to take the purple column and I'm going to multiply everything by 1 8. So I get 1 and 8, 0, negative 8, negative 1. And then I don't need that column. So what I'm really graphing is my y's didn't change, but my x's did. And I didn't graph my parent function yet either, so I better do that real fast. There's my parent function. Okay, so the new function, um, 1, negative 2. And then 1, 8, negative 1. That's kind of hard to graph. So I might skip that one and come back to it. Um, 0, 0. Negative 1, 2. your arrows and look at my arrows in my parent function. See how it kind of goes along horizontally. It's fine. Just go up. It's more like a, like a very long hill. Um, Alright, so from here, it has to look 
like this cube root function. It has to look like that, but it has a reflection. So it's going to go the other way. But it's still going to be like more horizontal, like those cube root functions look. It's kind of hard to decide by three points where to connect them. But that's how the cube root functions look. If it's not enough information, you can find more ordered pairs and figure it out. Right. Yeah. So for this one, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do all the steps for this one, but let's talk about the transformations and how we would fill out the chart. The first transformation would be what over here? What is giving me a transformation? From the parent function, what's something new? What up here is giving me a reflection? The negative up front is a reflection in the in the x axis, which means it is a vertical reflection. If you look at where it is. Put, it is where the y values go. It is not with the x. It's the y values. So over in my chart, if I'm using my chart, I would multiply by negative 1, the y values. There is another. Translate down 2. All right. The minus 2 is translate down 2. So. That would also affect the y value. So I would subtract 2. It's a subtraction sign. Now, why did I do the multiplication and then the subtraction? Why didn't I do subtraction I first? Why did order I do? Right. You have to do order of operations. So that's why we're doing it in that order. So when you put our x values, this is a cube root. So I'll do negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8. Y values would be negative 2, one, uh, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And then we would change our Y values each time. So it would be 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. And then 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. You would graph your X's and your very, like, most transformed y's. You graph what's on the outside, basically. Okay, so plotting the what's it called parent function. And then the transformed negative 8, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 3, 8, negative 4. Nice job, Mr. Swell. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> you have trouble with awkward silence, don't you? Yeah. Got a pretty good enough. You know. So you, you notice that this graph still has that same look of the uh, cube root cube, uh, function. It's just a reflection and then a shift. <laughs> okay, um, I am going to actually stop there today. It, it has day two in, the, in a different spot in there. But this is where I will end the day one note. And then we, we do have an assignment that was due today that we didn't have time to grade. We'll just do that because next class is block day. So on block day, we will grade that assignment and um, do the rest of the section. And then just a reminder, there's only two checks.
on your homework per question. Two checks per question. Yeah,